So, since I like doing things different lately and I've been trying out some different formats, today's video is very, very different. In fact, it's a conversation with my friends Josh and Amanda over at Star Wars IRL. They went on the Galactic Star Cruiser and I wanted to kind of pick their brains. So this is almost more of a podcast format, but heads up, just because we're on both sides of the country and the fact that we're recording over the internet, it gets a little crackly in the audio sometimes and it's a little quiet on their end. But I just wanted to prep you so you're ready. But I think you're going to enjoy this conversation. Um, I didn't actually edit out much. Uh, only things just to kind of make them make sense, just some long pauses. But for the most part, I wanted to keep the conversation intact because it really does, like when I was really listening to it, I was like, this sounds like just friends talking. And that's what I want you to have the same vibe of, of like, I just wanted to pick their brains and see like, what was it like for you guys? You weren't on the same cruise as I was. What was it like for you? And just, you know, we get into our nitpicks, some of my criticisms, which I may not have addressed as fully just yet. So if you want to see that, get a little bit more of my like full opinion. Well, obviously I love Star Cruiser. I get a little bit more into my, to my gripes in this one, which is something a little bit different. So I kind of just wanted to share this like real, just fun conversation with my friends about Galactic Star Cruiser with you guys. And if you want to go for the extra challenge, every time I say interesting or gotcha, take a shot and you will you will be dead in a few minutes. So for now, enjoy the video. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano and as most of you guys know, I've just got back from the Galactic Star Cruiser and it's pretty much the only thing I can think about lately. And I just want to keep talking with more people about it. So I've invited some friends on. I've got Josh and Amanda from Star Wars in Real Life. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the channel. And so... Thank you so much for having us. Oh, of course, of course. I'm actually really excited to talk to you guys because I ran into you on your Galactic Star Cruiser voyage. I, I had left mine. You did, yeah. And the day I left was... Was it, was it the <laughs> next day or was it... It was either way. You guys were on your Batu excursion when I happened to see you guys come by. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, cool. I had no idea yours was that early, but I knew, I was like, I want to talk to you guys and see how it went for you and kind of just kind of ask you and get your thoughts because I want other people's opinions. You weren't on the same cruise as me, so I don't know if the quality was still there. I just want to kind of pick your brains for a little bit and kind of share with my audience totally. what your experience was like. So first big question I've got for you is how closely were you guys following the whole Star Cruiser project, like leading up in the years since they announced it, and like were you guys following the marketing really close, or were you just kind of loose about it? I am not on social media much these days. I rely on her for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would find out from her, which was like immediate, and um, my emotion would feed off of like her energy. So yeah. I, I think she can answer this better than I can. So, I learned about the Galactic Scar Star Cruiser from Josh. Uh, with, with he had already started saving for it, and um, years so, ago, years ago. And unfortunately, we had to use some of that money to buy our house, <laughs> so we had to resave. Priorities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, adulting. <laughs> so then, once I learned about it, like I've never been to Batu before Galactic Star Cruiser. So oh, that was your first time? I was, yes. It was my first time. Can you believe that? Okay, that uh, opens like, up more questions then. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Imagine your first time at that too. Yeah. Part of Galactic Cruiser. I was literally talking about that probably the night before I saw you guys. Like we were in the Sublight Lounge talking about that exact idea of like, what if this like, is your oh, first time? Be great. Right? Yeah, okay, so we'll get, we'll get into that in a sec. So your first time, you're feeding off of what he told you. You guys have saved up again. Congratulations on the house, by the way. Uh, and Thank you. <laughs> and so then, Amanda, if you're the one following it more, were you following like all the news drops? Because I know in August is when they really started their push. September, we got some hints at pricing. October is when the booking started. Like, How closely were you following all of that? I was following it very closely because once I knew it existed, I had to have all the news and I was trying to shelter Josh a little bit because I couldn't <laughs> tell if he wanted spoilers uh -huh. so yeah okay I, I was following it I limited what I told him unless he was like 
Tell me more. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I was certainly staying away from like reaction videos from some of the marketing. Um, yeah. Because the, the, the last time I watched someone's reaction to like a marketing thing was Geeks and Gamers years ago before oh, the no. Skywalker <laughs> came out. It yeah. completely tore me apart. It broke me. And yeah. I made a battle yeah. after that never to uh, <laughs> uh, listen to other people's <laughs> opinions before the thing. Yeah, yeah, I definitely vet the channels I take advice from. That's one of the ones that yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so mm. now back to the how many like how many times you've been to Galaxy's Edge. This was your first time, Amanda. Josh, how many times have you been? This would be my fourth time. So four. So three prior to this. Yes. And so you guys aren't located like super close to a Disney park, so you don't get to go that often. Um, yeah. Okay. The side of the country. Gotcha. Well, I mean, you're on the For same side-ish. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, you're right. But you're up north, yeah. huh? So, mm -hmm. you guys aren't like regular, regular Galaxy's Edge people. I mean, even I don't oh, live yes. in California, but Thank I go you. as often as I can. All right, cool. Just trying to kind of gauge like where you're at with it. So then, so then the last time you were at Galaxy's Edge, Josh, was when I was with you, and I actually, I think I ditched you for Vimerati. <laughs> we, we were getting... <laughs> we were getting milk, and I was trying to show Ray this lightsaber... <laughs> And I've been trying for like yeah. find Ray all day, and then like we were getting blue milk, and Vimerati came up and was like, "Hey, you, you've been looking for Ray. I know where she's at." And I was like, "Uh, I gotta go do this." And so like I le <laughs> <laughs> I left on my mission. I was like, "Oh, th and this is kind of funny because how it was that was like my first taste of this, and now here we are with Star Cruiser, and it's like it's it was the same you kind know, of the, thing, the role playing and getting yeah. involved in the story type of thing. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of my first moment really doing that was when Vi Marati stopped me at the milk stand and said, "Hey, I like I know where Ray's at. Let's go now." And I was like, uh, "Sorry, dude, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do this. I got a mission." Like, and so we <laughs> snuck through the the marketplace. Like, go, go, yeah. Dude, what are you doing talking to me, you idiot? And, <laughs> go. And that was like what 2019, I believe. So that was a few years back. And so I, I loved that. Honestly, I was 10 years old in that moment again. I was a, a little yeah. kid sneaking through the marketplace with Vi Marati. It was so much fun. <laughs> and that's kind of what the Star yeah. Cruiser experience brought back to me. Um, so that's that's kind of funny. That was the last time I saw you. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, next that, question I, I got for I you. that was more oh. of a plan for uh, Galaxy's Edge, actually, with more of that role-playing. Yeah. Um, with the app, I, I think the marketing we were doing then was be a part of the story. The decisions you make in in the app will affect how I talk to you and stuff like that. But I don't think that really took off. You're uh, right. Like it didn't. It, it yeah, didn't I don't know if it was it's, fully budget cuts or what it was that really killed it. But you're right. It's not what they sold us on initially when they talked about it. Right. But um, now we have it. Sorry, yeah, sorry. now we but now it's behind a paywall, which some people are a little upset about. <laughs> right. Understandably. Understandably. Yeah. Uh so I am speaking of the paywall, I want to get into what was your booking process like? Like did you book right off the bat? How did you go about that? Booking for Star Cruiser. Yeah, we we booked as soon as we could. Um we're not annual pass holders, so we didn't get like first come first serve but as soon as the public opened, thing opened you guys were on that one yeah, we were on that one yeah okay cool. and by then the earliest availability was like until like april early april er, early april uh -huh. um and then uh, like a month or so later there was some cancellation and we contacted the travel agent that hey can you get us any closer we that's right sarah that's uh, right same as you and she's amazing. And she's honestly, I can't wait to meet her at Celebration. I'm going to give her the biggest hug. <laughs> good. Good. She's awesome. She's awesome. Yeah. So, all right. I mean, she's like literally now my sister. So, like <laughs> like I say, if, if Ray can be a Skywalker, Sarah can be my sister. So, that's that's what's going on. <laughs> she, she can be a, a hyphen O. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right. So, you guys booked... We had the bad marketing, and I remember the video you guys did responding to it. Uh, in, in that, this all actually clicks for me now because Amanda, you kind of led that video. You really like I, led that, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool. This is different for your channel," and I, I really liked it. I was like, "Oh, this is this is good." So how did how did I'm that glad go? I'm you liked it, Dan. I was not intending to lead that. 
but I'd been following most of the marketing, so I, yeah, but I didn't mean to do that. No, I, oh. I, I only let her take the lead. She was clearly the knowledge expert. I was the one who was catching up. So. Yeah, no, I liked it. I thought that I thought that was really it was different for your channel and I was like, "Oh, this is cool. I like that you're doing something different." And prior to that, I don't think we had seen you is going to take over. Absolutely <laughs> going to take over. Not. Absolutely not. <laughs> it's a hostile takeover. <laughs> All right. So after that and after the the crazy not so great marketing, was there any point where you thought you were actually going to cancel or were you like I know you kind of said you still had some faith on it. Uh, you'd even mentioned me in the video that I was like one of the few people that was still positive on it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but where were where were you guys on that? Like, like really, was there any actual point where you thought about canceling? Uh, so prior to some of the marketing materials that they released, canceling was nowhere on the radar. And that wasn't part of my like vocabulary. Um, so to speak, regarding this trip. Um, but then afterwards, you know, all of a sudden, I mean, thousand dollars is kind of doesn't look as cool as I wanted it to be. Yeah. Uh, let's put let, let's put cancellation back on the table. So it was on the table, but we never like seriously considered it. No. If that makes sense. Like we gotcha. had the money in the bank, and I have a lot of hope. For Disney they have blown my mind so many times before so it's like this doesn't look great but they're not going to release their best so my hopes were very high and they gotcha. were met <laughs> yeah, oh yeah I was banking on the fact that Disney put out the very Disney uh, <laughs> promo stuff not, yeah. not like commercials to like get you pumped up for this thing but like it's very, uh, I don't even know. Cutesy? Cutesy. Yeah. Like, here, follow me. Let me Dis show Disney, you. Disney Parks brand, basically. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that a lot of people didn't quite, that it didn't land well with a lot of people. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I felt like, oh, no, this is definitely Disney Parks brand. It felt like what I'm used to, because I am a Disney Parks person that I, you know, I for years and years have gone pretty often. Um so closer to Star Cruiser opening about two or three weeks before we're talking like mid February, there was some other commercials that had come out that were much better. Did you guys follow that or see that at all? Yes, but I'm blanking on them now. Refreshing, okay. Uh, they were shot like completely different. It was actually like good cinematic looking promo where they showed the you know the dinner, they showed a little glimpse of Gaia. There were a bunch of images that came out. I know because I've been following and reporting on this for like months now and every little bump in the road I've been a part of. Yeah. And this seemed to change the momentum as far as everybody I saw talking about it. When this happened, mid, it was like early to mid-February, um, this new promo images and video clips came out and they were just so much better that the momentum seemed to shift. All that doubt that everybody had from the months of November till then were just kind of like, Oh, this could be good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, but I, I don't think I was following closely. So you guys weren't following at that point? Okay. So then I let's was. get... Okay. If anything, I was probably following less. <laughs> gotcha. No, that makes sense, especially after the bad marketing. You'd be like, okay, I don't want to see anything at all now. Like, yeah, just let it happen. Anything else, anything else to, like, shake my faith in this any further than it's already been. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, so, so I what... did see those marketing. Oh, sorry, Dan. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, you saw the marketing. I saw that marketing, but that was the last I saw. I didn't see like Disney Food Blog when they got their free promo cruise or whatever. God, any of the I media guest stuff. I see. Yes, because I didn't okay. want spoilers. Gotcha. And that, yeah, that makes sense yeah. too. So it opened on March first. What day was your guys' journey? March 7th. Yes. 7th. Okay. That's right, because I got out on the 5th, and you guys would have started on... Oh, so you were not the one right after me, you're the one after after that. Because <laughs> I got out on the 5th. I was there three, yeah. third through 5th, so if you were on the 7th, you would have been... Yeah, okay. Now I'm placing where you guys are at, because I was like, when did I see you? Um, so <laughs> overall, it seems like you guys enjoyed it, right? 
That's what I'm getting based on how you're saying. You said you're un- oh understatement. Okay, so is it something you want was... to do again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we've already talked about it. We're already <sighs> contemplating how on earth we're going to be able to afford it again. But <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah. It's uh, it is pricey. It's definitely want it again, especially if they add new stories or yeah. Um, well there were stories that we found out about after our trip that we definitely want to go back on like uh, okay um, there was a Jedi arc that we had no idea about oh okay so um, my next question I had written down for you guys is what paths did you take like what was your story <laughs> I ended up on the smuggler resistance storylines okay yeah Pretty much the exact same thing, right? But you were doing the for- first order for a while. Uh, oh, very little. So she she actually had a really good idea uh, coming up to the day. Uh, she was going to do like some double agent work. She was going to take resistance jobs and first order jobs and uh, try to like relay the first order intel back to the resistance. That's like a, a double agent, right? Uh-huh, and yeah. then the day came. And she uh, she backed out. In her words, she didn't have the stomach for it. I couldn't I couldn't work with the first order. I saw him, and all my rage for those stormtroopers came forward, and I was like, I can't full resistance. Yeah, so I straight up piggybacked off of her amazing idea, uh, and I tried to double agent um, my way into the first order. Um, but you know, like I, maybe I just didn't do enough jobs for him. It, it just never really panned out. Plus, there was like one reaction with Lieutenant Roy that I had where I guess I didn't answer right. I think I like offended him or got on the oh. bad side. And he just he stopped talking to me. <laughs> and when you say yeah. he stopped talking to you, you mean in the app or in person or yeah. oh, in the app? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and so that's kind of one of the things that I had a problem with, too, is I wasn't getting as many interactions on the app as I thought I would. You know, there was some stuff with, like, Sammy and you know, I, I, everyone else in my group was getting stuff. And I was like, wait, why am I not getting as much? So I, I think that's one of those things that maybe needs to be spelled out a little bit clearer how it works. That's kind of one of my criticisms is, like, yeah. maybe make it yeah. a little clearer so we know how to play better. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. We had that problem with your data pack. Yeah. We had to run back to the concierge twice uh-huh. uh, trying to figure out why you weren't getting messages after completing tasks when I was. Right. So. Oh. Uh, at the store, Amanda and I basically did the exact same things on our data pads, interacted the exact same ways with the exact same characters, and she was getting follow-ups, and I wasn't all of a sudden. Interesting. Um, so I, I went now, to the customer help desk, and they said, oh, just give us some time, and Interesting. So, so part of what prompts that stuff is your magic band, and some of the characters, from what I've heard, I can't confirm this, but I've read it a couple times now, is that some characters have magic band touch points on them. So if you're close to those characters, like the oh. physical characters, that might prompt it as well. Again, I can't confirm it, but I've read it a couple times over the last couple days. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So I wonder if maybe there's something Amanda did, got a character you talked to, got closer to. That might have prompted Dude, this that. This is magic. It really <laughs> is. It really is. And so, like, I'm now that I'm back home. I'm like on the the mission to figure out how this all works. So you <laughs> <laughs> you went kind of s- scoundrel smuggler and resistance, Amanda. How far on the scoundrel smuggler path did you go? Like, did you meet with any characters specifically, or you know, like, what was your whole night one, night two kind of thing? Oh, um, I don't know how far you want me to get into spoilers. Oh, we're going to go full spoilers. I I want full, yeah, full discussion. We're going to go full spoilers. Okay. Um, So, actually, uh, I was working with Wraith Cole. Uh, We got the coaxium back, and uh, we helped him smuggle it through the ship, which was awesome. Uh, Josh and I had a really great dramatic moment (laughs) where he was going to go help smuggle the luggage, and I had to stay behind, and he ran up and gave me this really great kiss, and he was like, what'd you say? Uh, I, I can't remember. It was so in the moment. It was like a cheesy action film type of line. I just like grabbed her 
from her head and just kind of like, be careful out there, or like something super dramatic in front of everyone. In front, yeah. And even As a distraction. Sammy was like, that was not subtle. No, no, not a distraction for any no, oh. not not for any reason other than just to be dramatic and silly and that's awesome. Get some weird looks. <laughs> that's that's so, awesome. So yeah, we went all in. Yeah. Um, gotcha. So you smuggled okay. coaxium, right? Yeah. Yes. Were you part of the? Is that the case oh. for everyone. We also not for smuggled me. data tapes. Okay. What did you smuggle? I smuggled a. So I don't know if you saw in the lobby. Um, there was that compass. They give you a tour. They show you that yeah. compass. Yeah. With the, it makes the logo. Inside was a little stone. It's a purple and like pinkish blue stone it's, called the Haya Nenea. Was that Gaia's? That was yeah, Gaia's yeah. stone. Gaia. It's for Ryloth. Yeah. So in my story, yeah. we actually like we met with Wraith Cole down in the um, the cargo hold, and we planned so, out how to steal yeah. that. So part of my <laughs> missions on Batu was going around and having Zabaka, the Toydarian toy maker, create a fake so that we could swap them. So that was my mission. That's awesome. So I want to know That's what so we're cool. in all. And so we actually did the heist. Like we planned it out downstairs, went upstairs, and I was actually like the point man for Wraith Cole. We had to create a distraction. Like one couple did a fake proposal and they got all the <laughs> cast member they got all the cast members out from behind that little snack bar area they distracted them and brought them out so that Wraith Cole could sneak in behind the cast member area open the case swap the jewels slid it to me under the bananas i held on to it he comes back around we do a little secret handshake pass it back and then the captain's like Wraith Cole what are you doing and he like turns it turns right back around hands it back to me so now i'm holding it watching Wraith Cole get interrogated by the captain, and the captain's making him turn out his pockets. Like, no, I don't have anything. Meanwhile, I'm six feet away holding the stone. And so, like, let all that play out, and then turn back around and get him the stone back. And then later that evening, we were able to restore it to Gaia, who gave us, like, a very special thank you. Oh so that that was my That's path on the scoundrel awesome. thing. That's it was really it cool. <laughs> so one of the things we talked about earlier in the interview that I wanted to get back to was, Amanda, your first time at Galaxy's Edge was Star Cruiser. So when I when I was there, I I was thinking, I was like, imagine this being your first time. You like never been to Batu before? How like how was that? You've never been like I'm sure you've seen videos and stuff if you've been paying attention, but like you got such a unique experience having that your first. So there are no words, first of all. Um, I cannot describe the mix of emotions that I felt when I was finally able to walk onto Batu, and and plus we got that special little corridor with like the scratches on the walls, and I'm yep. like, what type of creature is is coming through here? And and then it opened up into the first order area, and then Josh took me over to the Falcon, and I was just I was ready to drop to my knees. Um, that's just yeah. Um, and then as far as videos go, I have seen a lot on Galaxy's Edge, um, but I have avoided videos for Rise of the Resistance for the past two years. I had oh, wow. no idea what to expect for that ride. The Good only for you. video of mine that he has never watched before was my coverage of Rise of the Resistance. That's, That's how hardcore she was staying away from spoilers. Yes, and I have watched <laughs> every single one of his videos, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. She went on that fresh. <laughs> yeah, that's... Did you like it? Oh, I loved it. Like it the ride? Yeah, yeah, it's it was... top tier. <laughs> I mean, my favorite Disney ride ever, I think. And that's... I'm a huge Disney fan, so that's a... That's a, yeah, some high praise. It's a high some... bar to clear. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, Josh got my reaction going through yeah. the first time. <laughs> so I, I'm sure at some point, maybe he might put that video out just for <laughs> hilarity purposes. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So <laughs> my mission on Batu was to create the fake Hyananea stone. What was your missions on Batu? We had two. Uh, the first one was to collect coaxium and bring it back. Yeah, yeah. which uh, we, I guess... And I think everybody has that, kind of, because I had that, too. Okay. okay, okay. And then 
the second one was the data tapes. Okay. And where were, what was that? Like, how did that go down? So we had to get these data tapes for Lankham Mock uh, to mm -hmm. override the ship's systems. Yes. Yeah. So we found them in this little box. You have to like scan it. Scan it. Get the on data tapes on Batu. Yeah. Yep. So do you remember in the engineering room, like pretty much every station uh, where the main console is for like each part? Yeah. Um, down below the buttons a little bit, there's like a little uh, a little slot thing that looks like yeah. Yep. Um, those were for data tapes. Uh, and that's what we took and and so did you play yeah, that out activity. did you guys get to do the big activity yeah. in the engineering room yeah yeah okay i did, yeah. i got to do that too i i jumped in on that on accident okay cool. <laughs> <laughs> like i happened to you be near the engineering room yeah so i happened to be nearby and i saw people waiting outside the engineering room i was like oh hey what's going on in here and i tried to scan in and it was locked and the cast member was like oh hey dano you know, I recognize you from the hollows and I'm like, oh, nice, cool. Someone who watches the channel, I guess. And I was like, so what's going on in there? She said, well, there's a VIP tour. Are you invited? I was like, no, I'm not invited. And so she goes on her iPad and goes beep, boop, beep, whatever, puts my name in and adds it to my data pad. And all of a sudden I get a message saying, oh, meet me in the, in the engineering room at this time. And it was unlocked for me. And I was able to take part in that mission. So on the fly, they were able to like add it for this me. This place is magic. <laughs> it was it was cool. And so I got to do that whole thing with the tapes, but I didn't know how the tapes got there. I wasn't part of that. My job yeah. was to get the stone made. So your job was to get the tapes and the coax. Yeah, and that was probably one of the more memorable tasks of our trip for me, at least. Uh, and, and so. Well, so when you guys were doing the thing in the engineering room with all the tapes, who was your main character leading that? Was it the captain, Lenka Mock, or Sammy? When I did it, it was Sammy. Really? Oh. So it must happen multiple times. No, that times. was Lenka Mock for us. Gotcha. Maybe it does. Um, my favorite, I think, was this totally random one we stumbled into. We were coming out of the cargo hold, and Gaia and Wraith Cole were there with a huge group. They had just recovered the stone, and yep. everyone was like, ooh, what are you guys doing in the cargo hold? And <laughs> after everyone laughed at us, and they finished up, and the group left, Gaia came over to us, and she was like, I need you guys to meet me back here at 6.45. I yeah. have a mission for you. And we were like, oh my gosh. So we went back. And we planned like this whole distraction during Gaia's singing performance. Mm -hmm. We had to like keep Lieutenant Croy out of the way because they were bringing the coaxium onto the ship. That's right. And getting Chewie out at yeah. the same. No, no, right, Chewie was Chewie the night out. before. Coaxium. Yeah. They were bringing the coaxium on. That's awesome. Yeah. So I had a similar thing with yeah. Gaia. She had asked us after we recovered the stone. She's or something. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, Sandro. So, your Sandro, speaking of which, the uh, guitar player, was he a Tigruda or a Mirialin? Because there are multiples Tigruda. of each. He was a Tigruda. Mine wasn't. Mine was a Mirialin. Really? Yeah. I was interesting to see the differences. About that because I watched your video and I was like, "Where's his?" Uh, he has head tails and everything. Or, yeah, mantra. Where, where's his? Yeah. Yeah. No, the different the different actors play him as a different species, I guess. So interesting, interesting, I, interesting. Yeah, I think you swap actors for every role. It, it looks like. Yeah, there's at least yeah, three or four of every character. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, so during bridge training, there is everybody's bridge training depending on what time it hits. Uh, has a different story moment. So you do your bridge training, they teach you how to use the systems, and then something happens different for each session. Some people got to smuggle on Chewbacca. Mine took me to Hoth, where we had to get a special transponder to use on Batuu the next morning. What was your guys' bridge training like? Like, what was the special story moment? Smuggling Chewie on board. Yeah. You guys got to do that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 We, uh, we finished the bridge ops training. The last thing we did was like travel through hyperspace somewhere. We landed in the asteroid field. We had to like destroy all the destroy asteroids. Destroy them. The ship from sinking in the Atlantic or something. 
and uh, <laughs> up comes Chewie in this random ship. So we like to pull him with pull him in. All that. That's yeah. cool. So then, does that mean your bridge training was early? Did you guys have like an earlier bridge training that night? I forget. I honestly do too. I think it was before. It was definitely be before dinner. Okay, so yeah, that's an early one then. That is an early because yeah. mine was yeah. after dinner. And I had the early dinner, and during our dinner, at the end, this family is sneaking Chewbacca, like physically sneaking Chewbacca through the dining room while Guy is performing. And we're all in the corner of our eye like, wait, what's going on over there? And they were sneaking Chewbacca in, but what I heard is from the family before that, or someone who had bridge training earlier, they were the ones who did what you did. They brought his ship, you know, close, and they got him on board, and then all of a sudden, physically, he's there. And, the, you know, they had to sneak him and hide him from McCroy. So it's kind of cool how they made that happen. But since mine was after that event, Chewbacca was already there. So I didn't smuggle him on. Instead, we had to get a device from Hoth to use the next mm-hmm. morning. So that's pretty cool. Well, um, so what was that Hoth transponder device for? What, what I, don't <laughs> I don't remember. It, it, wasn't, anything, it wasn't anything major. Uh, but we right. did talk to C-3PO and R2. Those are the characters we dealt with. That's cool. Like, we had to pull on a cargo crate with this little, like, device, whatever it was. To you, I, I still don't even remember what the what the point of it was. To be honest, it wasn't super there, super there was important. So much going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was um, confused by a lot of the story elements too. It's like, wait, that, what are we doing? Who are we distracting? Why? Yeah, who am I doing this for? <laughs> who, which character am yeah. I helping right now? <laughs> yeah, so it does get to yeah. be a lot. Um, you mentioned you didn't really do the Jedi path too much, like the whole Force kind of stuff. I missed out on it too because there was some neat stuff that went on, but. Speaking of the Saja and the Force lightsaber training, how did you guys feel about the lightsaber training? Better than I anticipated, but still left plenty to be desired for okay. me, in my opinion. I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I kind of had an expectation that the marketing materials of the lightsaber training was just level one basic here's this guy who's never played before and watch him do the, the very level one thing, this thing. And yeah. Everyone gave him crap. He's like, oh, what is this? You know, this looks so lame. And it did. But, uh, yeah, I, I expected that to be level one, and it did. So um, it obviously got more advanced once we got there. And that surpassed my expectations. But I would have liked it to go even further um gotcha still like even though the lights went around faster and faster after each round they were still kind of like in four or five general locations yeah yeah it was just the four corners basically yeah okay um, so you would have wanted more from that no that makes sense yeah. that makes sense so that i i think was better for kids gotcha yeah kids really enjoying that. Um, yeah so, since we're talking about criticisms, are there any other big criticisms that you had about the whole thing? Like, any major glaring things that you're like, yeah, that should be fixed, that should could be better? My biggest was the launch pod to get onto the Star Cruiser. I really expected that to be... A ride. A ride. A bigger deal. Yes, yeah, so did I. And I, I was, like, hanging on tight i was ready for bumping and i understand why they couldn't do it but at the same time i was like that's it <laughs> yeah they put it on the website like it was a feature and it's like okay it's just an elevator ride <laughs> yeah it's an elevator i guess um but i i was honestly expecting it to be uh kind of like in rise of the resistance when you get on the shuttle and then they open the door and now you're on a star destroyer yeah, but like that, I don't. I don't even know if that's an elevator or just like open this. It door just rotates. It yeah, it, you're on a. Yeah. You enter the ship on one thing, and you're in a room that literally just rotates, and then it opens, gotcha. and you're yeah, you know, you're in the show building. But still, it's Disney, yeah. and they have a trillion dollars to play with. I'm sure yeah. they could have had an elevator, Otis or whoever he is, to come in, create a custom elevator. That would vibrate a little. At least some subwoofers <laughs> or something some, in there to make yeah <laughs> to make it feel. Yeah. So at least uh, that. Yeah. No, that's but a that's a that, fair criticism. So honestly, that's actually my only 
complaint, I think, about the entire yeah. experience was that n nothing on the ship moved. The gotcha. shuttle going there, it was just a smooth elevator thing. I will say, though, I don't know if it was my sleep deprivation because <laughs> we'd been up since, like, 2 a.m., but that night on the ship, I felt like I was moving. Um, it could have just been the sleep Definitely. deprivation. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking about sleep, then, how did you feel about the rooms? Oh, they were wonderful. They were great. I, I slept like a little baby angel both nights. Did, did either of you um, jump into the bunks? Uh, we didn't sleep there, but no. yeah, we jumped in. I wanted to, but I it was like, to. you have two nights. <laughs> yeah, might as well enjoy the bed. It, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the bunks, the bunks were roomy. Another complaint that I had oh, was yeah. uh, regarding the room, and I think you felt the same way. I would have really liked to go to bed looking outside at space. Oh, yeah. But you can't see space without having this enormous like floodlight just filling the room. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, and, and I heard that complaint while we were there from other people. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. They're like, you should be able to look at it, but without that light being on. If they could turn that light yeah. off, it would make things so much better. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not a huge fan of that visor that came down. Like, what? Yeah. Don't yeah. go away. <laughs> but I mean, minor complaint. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, not a big deal. <laughs> Um, so one of my criticisms that, uh, it hasn't been released in any of my videos yet, but I'm getting too soon is I didn't love the finale, the like final really? show. Really? I, I mean, I liked it. Okay. But I thought it could have been, there were some things about it that I had some problems with and maybe I'm a little like too what? picky, but I like to hear your response. Really? Like, well, you're that surprised. I didn't like it. So I'm glad you liked it. I think that's cool. Yeah. I had issues. I mean, obviously the the switcheroo with Ray's lightsaber, where she ignites it and then immediately goes to the ground and switches off to another one. I knew that was going to come. I called that back in August that that's how that was going to work. I knew we'd only see the igniting right. lightsaber for half a second. I that's the only way that could work. So I wasn't mad about that, but it was a little too obvious. They could have done a better job to me of distracting where we look, so I wouldn't just be like focused on her <laughs> seeing that awkward switcheroo. Um, I didn't think Kylo Ren you sounded looking great. For it, I maybe I was, maybe I was looking for it, okay. and that's a good point. That's actually a good point. I probably was looking for it. Because Where we were standing, we could see that at all. Yeah. Oh, cool. And when when she ducked, I saw the blaster, like like she was ducking to avoid it. So to me, the movement made a hundred percent sense. Oh, good, cool, just cool. Running. How did you feel about Kylo Ren? Because um, I didn't love the way he sounded. That's the part that he, took he me sound out. A weird. I'm not sure he did. why. That so the I, from what I heard, the reason he sounds so weird is because it's live. It's not, and they're transcoding his voice live, and they can't quite get it right. Whereas when you're on uh, Galaxy's Edge, he's using those gloves that have the, um, yeah. you know, the pre-programmed sayings. Pre so it's, it's all pre-recorded, and they've been able to make that sound just like Kylo Ren, which is why it does when you're on Galaxy's Edge. But because they're doing it live in that show, it's like a live transcoding that I guess they don't have downright or something. And that's why he sounds like mm -hmm. super muffled and kind of weird. Interesting. Um, and another yeah. just nitpick on that is it's Kylo Ren with the mask that he destroyed already. Yeah, in in, in, in the last Jedi, Jedi, he destroyed it. In it. Yeah. it. If it had the cracks, it'd be a little premature because yeah. we haven't seen that yet. Because that's Episode Nine, and this takes place between. But again, those are like just being super nitpicky. But that did kind of take me out of it. Overall, I did like the finale, but there was those like those production things to me was like okay, that could be a lead a little bit better, especially for what we're paying. Okay. So one thing that did kind of take my breath away was uh, that force pull that he did oh the, that was cool yeah. that was very cool that was very cool yeah yeah so one like thing one of the most memorable okay. parts about that night for me yeah i think and that was the coolest yes. move of the whole <laughs> finale is seeing that yeah. mm -hmm. um now i was curious something we didn't talk about yet was uh food and drinks anything like stand out that you really loved anything you didn't love did you so go hard at the sublight lounge was 
probably the best steak I've ever had in my life. I've heard a bunch of people say that too. It was really yeah, good. That was insanely good. Um, but overall, I would say I wasn't crazy about probably 60% of the food. I tried everything that I could, but most of it was missed for me. It was just a little too too out there. Exotic or desserty or yeah. Just, now, know, are you little, are you an adventurous eater at home? Yeah. Or are you okay? I, I'm oh. open to everything. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> I've made some things before, and you're like, don't like this. I've tasted them. Yeah, okay. Okay. But your your tastes are narrow. Okay. Well then Amanda, how about you? How was the how was the food for you? <laughs> uh, I'd say about the same. Um, about the same. We I also tried everything. Um and the, one of the things that stuck out to me the most were the I don't know if you tried. There were some options. <laughs> she hates in, I do hate seafood. Oh, yeah, that's, but that's I fair. Tried it. You did try the blue shrimp. I did. You and didn't I try the stew with the crawfish in it. Correct. I did. Stay I, I avoided that too. And I do like seafood. <laughs> I, I just, like that. I really like that stew. He was staring oh, yeah. at me. It was weird. <laughs> um, so, like, one of the things that stuck out to me were the bao buns. I loved those. Those they are were good. Really good. Yeah. 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 Um, but like, I love the variety. I don't, I wouldn't change a thing about the dining experience there was something yeah. for everyone you didn't have to eat all of it it was great i was pretty happy with the dining experience the, the only thing that i was kind of surprised about was how uh earthly they named some of them or like on the menu they, they put like the earth names of the foods so i just wasn't expecting that i don't think they do that in dock Lee seven do they, they- kind of changed it and they do a little bit now i think a lot of people didn't you know at first it would just say tippy up and it didn't say chicken at all and now they added chicken as like a little addendum like hey heads up this is chicken don't worry and that might be more because of uh you know international travelers or people who you know who don't understand yeah allergies or people who don't understand that hey this is we're playing star wars here like really even to the names um so i think some of that stuff went over people's heads so they ditched a little bit of it um, but yeah, but yeah, I mean, myself, I, I loved most of the food. I was, I loved a little bit more of it than you guys did. I think I would probably put myself yeah. at like a 90% or uh, maybe even oh. a 95% wow. of what I liked. Yeah, no, I, I liked a lot of it. Oh, damn. Yeah. I was up there. there wow. Again, the, the stuff that I stayed away from, like the crawfish thing, I probably would have liked it, but just at the moment I was like, ah, not now, not now. And then I never went back and tried it. Uh, so you said you want to go back. You mm-hmm. seems like you liked it a lot. The big question everyone wonders is, was it worth it? I would think so if you said you want to go back, but was so was it worth it? Just in your words. For me, yes. Um, I, I would pay that price again. I'm kind of hoping we don't have to. I think we're planning to split a room next time with like another couple a, or a, a bigger small group. group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I would do that price again. I would. What about you? I definitely want to do it again. But I'm not sure if I would pay full price. I mean, it's six thousand yeah. know? like, yeah. dollars. Yeah, like we that's a lot. Backpack her up. <laughs> it's a and lot. Then we spent three thousand dollars on drinks, merch, uh, yeah. lightsabers. So it's not we just spent- six thousand. It was yeah, a lot of money. It was a lot. It was a lot. No, it, I'm very glad I got to experience it, and I don't regret it at all or paying that amount of money at all. But there are other things I want to do in life, and I, I mean that's just how expensive it. It's a very big expense. Like you have to rethink about and weigh against other things that you want to accomplish. And I don't know if I shell out that kind of money again for something that I've already done. You know. Yeah, no, that makes that's yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Um, but what's interesting is almost everyone I've talked to that has been does say that they're like, I want to go again. Like they say it was worth it, and they say they want to go back. 
Um, some people have been like, no, that's fine. Like, I totally pay the same price again. That's cool. Um, but again, it, it differs on your situation. Like myself, I split a room yeah. with three other adults. So my price was seventeen fifty one. You know, not including flights to get there and the few day the week I spent in Disney World afterwards. But seventeen fifty one, I would do that again in a heartbeat. You know, I didn't have to pay six thousand dollars. So yeah, I think you guys are right about next time you go split a room because honestly, you're not in the room very much anyways. Right. You're really not. Yeah, no. Like you mentioned, you guys were up till two a.m. Was that like on the actual Star Cruiser night? You were up till two a.m. No, uh, that was our flight. Yeah, that was ah, our okay. Get a five a.m. flight to get to Florida in the morning. Yeah. Otherwise, we would okay. have gotten to the Star Cruiser late. Gotcha. And that was an unacceptable situation. It was, and we ended yeah, up that. being the first in line to get in. So worth nice. it. Nice. <laughs> nice. Cool. Mm-hmm. Last call. That was another complaint I had. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sublight Lounge at 12.20. Last call was 20 minutes ago. (laughs) You you don't give us any breaks all day. And then you have (laughs) last call at midnight? Yeah, on night night one. It was later. Yeah, second second night night was was later. later. And and I joined you on the second night. The first night I passed out. Mm-hmm. So any speaking of the sublight and last call, any specific drinks stick out to you guys that you guys like really like? That Hoth icebreaker. Oh, that was a good one. I need that. I need those more often. I kept ordering the same beer, and now I can't remember what it was. Do you remember? Gold Squadron Lager. That was a favorite in our group. It was. Some I actually. Sort of... I happened to have a menu, right here. Oh. <laughs> bad, bad motivator IPA, Trandoshan ale, no, bad motivator. W- we tried the bad motivator at Ogus Cantina, and that was my favorite. Okay. But that's not what Sorry. I kept ordering on the cruise. Um, there's Trandoshan ale, Gold Squadron Lager, and Gamorian ale. Gamorian ale. That's Gamorian the one. ale. That's, that's... What I kept ordering over and over. Gotcha. Um, I had like one cocktail though uh, when I wanted to break from beer. I forget what it was called. It was, it was the Huntress whiskey. or something Ooh, like that. Oh, Mark of the Huntress. Yeah. Mark, Mark of the Huntress. Huntress. That was it. Yeah, it was a bourbon drink. Was that was that was a good one. It. Oh, no. It was pretty strong, though. By it the was. end of that drink, I was all about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, guys, this has been a good conversation. I'm glad to get your feedback and kind of get a different opinion on the whole Star Cruiser thing. So thank you for hanging out and doing this. This has been fun for me. Yeah. Uh, but let everybody know where they can find you guys online and what you guys are up to. You know, plug plug away. Okay, so I have a YouTube channel. It's called Star Wars in Real Life. That's uh, the bulk of my social media presence. Um, <laughs> I have an Instagram, Star Wars underscore IRL. It's my handle, I think. It is. I always forget. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm basically just on those two, those two sites. I'm on Instagram as at real life geek. So you can find me there. Awesome. That's us. Come find me. Cool. <laughs> well, guys, thanks again for being a part of this. Everyone at home, be sure to give them follow. All that good stuff. Leave a thumbs up before you leave this video. And until next time, don't be a move milker. Be the spark. Don't do that. Don't do it. Ignite the fire. There you go. <laughs>